Steve Hunter. Steve, like a lot of people, knows that the sins he commits are wrong, and he makes he makes it feel real bad. The problem is he still enjoys doing it. Part of him hates sin, part of him secretly enjoys it. Steve is a man torn between two worlds. Lord, I've done it again. <laughs> I have this, or I, I have this, this dung. <coughs> Would you mind taking care of it for me, Lord? I know I shouldn't have done it, and I, I feel horrible about it. Lord, would you forgive me? Of course I will, Steve. <sighs> oh, that is such a relief. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you mean I could just keep bringing this stuff to you and you just, you just take it off my hands? This is so cool. Hey, there's something that really has me concerned here. bringing me this stuff time and time again to cleanse your conscience. You know, and time and time again, I forgive you. And Steve, you're substituting confession for repentance. Yes. Lord! Lord, I, I, I really do feel bad for what I've done. But Lord, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't have the strength 
to change, Lord. I can't overcome this temptation. You know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Right? <laughs> Lord, will you forgive me? Steve, you know I will. But listen, I, I prefer you just stop doing these things. Lord, Lord, listen, I'd rather not talk about it, Lord. Hold on, Steve. Wait, I gotta go. Listen, let's spend some time together today. Steve, I have the solution for you, man. Let's sit and talk for a while, please. Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. Next, meet Mike Albright. Mike is one of those guys who goes to church a couple of times a year. You know, the kids' Christmas play and maybe the big church potluck. And he calls God the man upstairs, which really reflects the shallowness of his Christian walk. Prayer is infrequent with Mike. It usually revolves around something he wants. There has been very little change in his life since his profession of faith ten years ago. It's a good thing for Mike that he has a praying wife. Today things have gotten pretty serious. Mike has just been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and he knows he needs a girl. It's cancer. This can't be. It's got to be a mistake. your help today. Look, Lord, it's cancer. Can you believe it? Cancer. I'm only 42 years old. I have a wife and two children. They need me, Lord. And I need them. You know, Lord, I always hoped they would, they would outlive me, but, but not like this. It's too soon. I have so many things left undone. And so many things left to do, Lord. Lord, I ask you, just this one time, please, please take this away from me. Hold on, Mike. Listen, uh, I know what the doctor told you this morning. Mike, in fact, I've known it. I've known it since before you were born. But Mike, listen, I have a plan for your life. If you just trust me. But Mike, first, we got to deal with all this garbage in your life. Garbage? What garbage, Lord? <laughs> at that man this morning on I-96. <laughs> Come on, Lord. I didn't do anything wrong. The guy deserved it. He cut in front of me. No. Listen, brother, what you did was wrong. You can't curse. You can't get so angry. But that's not how things work in my kingdom. Listen. The anger of man does not bring about the righteousness of God. Well, listen, Lord, I, I want to tell you something. If anybody gets in my way, I'm going to let them hear about it. That's just the way it is with me. Listen, i got to go. Hold on. Mike, listen, brother. Before I do that, I've got to deal with this garbage. Mike, listen. My yoke is easy. My burden is so much lighter than the one you're carrying now. Let's spend some time here today. Come on, sit with me. Lord, wait a second. You're making a big deal out of nothing. Besides, I'm not sorry for what I've done.
Here is Cindy Russell. Cindy is almost the exact opposite of Mike. She is super conscientious of her faults. Cindy's problem is that she identifies with the evilness of her sin so much that she's completely blind to the grace God has to forgive her. seated together at a table at the church potluck. <laughs> and the subject of Ruth Viola comes up. As is so often the case in church circles, they begin their gossip fest. Little do they realize that while they are talking about the garbage in Ruth's life, they are covering themselves with garbage of their own.
Well, let me explain that to you. See, the dumb gate, as it was called, is one of the nine gates that led into the old city of Jerusalem. And it was by this gate that all the refuse and human waste was received and carried into the valley of Hinnom for burning. And as its porter, my job was to receive the filthy, disgusting stuff from the people of my city and carry it away. This dung that I refer to, that's your skin. You know it's a, it's a lie you tell. It's every disobedient and uh, dishonoring act that you perform. It's every impure thought that you keep. You know, there are uh, parts of this ministry absolutely disgusting to me. Consider, if you will, the smell of an open septic tank on a hot summer day. Not a place you want to hang out for very long. Is it? You know, you need to know that my nose is about a thousand times more sensitive to this stuff than yours will ever be. You know, some of you need to realize that although I deal with this stuff all the time, it still bothers me greatly. I will never get used to the smell of this wretched filth or the way it makes me feel when it touches my skin. You know, but you'll never hear me complain about this stuff, about what I do. It's my responsibility. But as much as I detest the smell of your sin, Oh, it's the sweet fragrance you have when you're clean that makes it all worth it to me. You know I'll gladly deal with the garbage and the smell if we can just get to the clean. You won't hear me complain about what you put me through. But if you could do me a favor, just just a few things. Could I be more than uh, just your garbage man? More than your Santa Claus? You know what? I'll gladly take care of the garbage in your life. I'll answer your prayer. And I'll do it gladly. And I'll do it faithfully. You know what my real desire is? Because I want to be your best friend. I want to be your most sacred confidant. I want to hear your heart's cry. I want to soothe your pain. You guys, I love you more than you could ever imagine. 